back to another video today we're going to be talking about storm amy which will impact parts of the northern uk and also parts of ireland during friday and into saturday uh, bringing some very strong winds and rain and in this video we're going to talk about what's causing storm amy, storm amy to develop and also looking in more detail at some of these potential impacts so starting off, this is the satellite imagery from windy.com across the North Atlantic right now. And the thing that might stick out to you is this big mass of cloud extending from near where Bermuda is up into parts of the North Atlantic. Now this is the remnants of two, uh, two tropical cyclones, uh, Humberto and Imelda. Humberto was previously a Category 5 hurricane uh, across the South Atlantic, now transitioned into an extra-tropical cyclone and produced uh, some weather fronts. And the remnants of the system are now across the North Atlantic, as you can see here uh, on this tropical tidbits chart. Uh, this 990 millibar low, kind of the elongated shield look, this is the low that X Humberto produced. We also have Imelda to the south, and what both of these tropical systems have done is they've really energized the jet stream. And you can see that if we go to the 200 millibar wind, uh, it might take a second to load. But notice how we have this big sort of ridge of purple and pink colors as well as the red colors. Now this jet stream was energized, like I said, from those tropical cyclones. But now it's going to pick up the remnants. And as we play through this loop, you can see, move them very quickly towards the UK. And notice the low, which was once 990 millibars, is now 953 millibars as it approaches northwest Scotland. So a lot deeper. And the main reason for that is, like we were talking about, the jet stream. And in particular, the jet stream, or jet streaks, which is the regions of the jet stream with strong winds, as we've got here in purple, if you manage to kind of cut it into quarters, so you imagine down the middle and then like this, the right entrance, so this area here, and the left exit, so this area here, are generally, oh, sorry, I don't know why I've just clicked here. Um, those two regions promote the strongest development of low pressure systems because that's where the air being uh, kind of oh i have no idea what i've just done let me go backwards sorry but in the right entrance and the left exit the air at the upper levels is spreading uh, apart the most it's diverging the most and what that means is the air at the surface has to fill the gap the most and if you imagine air apart at the upper levels and coming together at the lower levels and rising, that creates a vacuum at the surface, which is our low pressure. And so that's what's going to happen. First, it crosses into the right entrance region and then into the left exit region. And so it becomes a very, very deep low by the time it reaches uh, the UK on Friday evening into Saturday morning at around 953 millibars. You may be wondering though, what does this actually look like? Well, we can show you some of the forecast and model output for the storm now. So this, we'll start off with the GFS. This is probably the most common model that people use. And you can see this is today. We've got a small disturbance across parts of the UK and Ireland, which is bringing heavy rainfall and gusty winds, but nothing too extreme. However, you can clearly see what is going to become Storm Amy, now moving to the northwest and it gets pretty strong winds on the southern flank as you can see here impacting parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland but the strongest winds are as usual with these deep lows on the southern and western flank as that pushes through northern Scotland. However that is just one possible scenario and even at this range we do have a bit of uncertainty and I can show you that by looking at the GEFS ensembles. So let me get this up here. This is the ensembles of the GFS, so imagine we've got the main model, but then we also have a subset of around 30 smaller models, which can give you an idea on the spread of potential solutions, because obviously, uh, forecasting the weather, you have to look at all the different kinds of outcomes. And what this is showing is among all the mini models within the model, the tracks, they have this low taking. And actually, for two days out, the uncertainty <coughs> sorry, uh, is actually quite high. You can see there's quite a large spread between these solutions to the north and these solutions to the south, which actually has quite a big impact on the eventual uh, impacts to the UK. Because imagine if the low takes a track further, further to the south, actually going across northern Scotland, one of the strongest winds in that case, uh, I mean, I can show you some examples. I think we've got the arp edge as a good example for that. If the low takes a track itself across the north of the UK, as you can see that the centres cross the north, the strongest winds will be uh, as you can imagine, a little bit further south. So actually on this run, we get very strong winds impacting Western Scotland, also parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And the far north of Scotland 
manages to kind of escape relatively unscathed, obviously still strong winds. If we compare this to maybe an icon solution, actually I haven't checked if this is, actually icon is also a similar thing. So you can see here very strong winds across uh, Ireland, then Northern Ireland, and then Central Scotland. But if you look at the GFS, uh, you can see this time the low is actually tracking to the north, it's not across the land, so northwest Scotland instead uh, really bears the brunt. Same thing for the UKV, I don't have it loaded right now so I can't actually show you guys, uh, but the UKV is suggesting a similar thing. So that's what the main uncertainty is at the moment, the exact track of the low. Also, we do have some uncertainty about the wind speeds, but what I'm showing you here is the potential vorticity chart. Now, this is a fairly complicated idea, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to maybe try and do an explainer video at some point. Um, <clears throat> But essentially, what this kind of uh, area in blue and pink, uh, kind of you can see a swell shape, this is showing a PV anomaly, which essentially uh, means really dry air descending round the backside of this low pressure system. And you can kind of imagine if this is obviously it's not actually showing moisture, but you can imagine the sort of hook shape you might get in the cloud. And when you get a really strong PV anomaly punching into a low pressure system like this, it is often reflective of a very strong powerful and deep low and often in cases like these you get very very strong winds on the uh, southwest flank of the low as the air descends and it's very energetic air with a lot of wind strength from high levels of the atmosphere to the ground and so the GFS actually is showing t relatively tame winds as you can see if the GS were to be correct GFS rate were to be correct we'd be seeing 60 mile hour gusts for a lot of Ireland 60 mile hour gusts for parts of Northern Ireland and then 70 to just about 80 mile hour gusts across parts of Northwest Scotland 60 70 for generally Scotland as a whole the icon by contrast has gusts of as you can see 60 70 even 80 miles an hour across parts of Ireland uh, 60 70 mile an hour gusts across parts of um, Northern Ireland and hopefully I'm not getting any comments saying 6 7 by the way uh, just preemptively and then you can see 80 even 99 hour wind gusts across parts of Scotland even inland so personally I'm leaning slightly towards the icon arpeg type solution where you get those 80 90 mile an hour wind gusts just because of the strength of this low though as you can see the GFS is illustrating maybe winds won't be as strong. You may also be saying this uh, region is very prone to strong winds, that is true, but number one the trees are in full leaf which mean uh, it's a lot more easy for them to fall over so travel disruption is more likely. Another thing is that we're going to be seeing a lot of rain and I'll explain the reasoning behind that and as I was talking about these hurricanes were, were causing these storms to develop and the hurricanes to the tropics, warm air, moist air so it can carry a lot of moisture and that's exactly what you're seeing here in green. This is something called the precipitable water anomaly and precipitable water precipitable water sorry is essentially the volume of water the atmosphere is holding and as you can see the green is in and blue as well is indicating significantly above average levels of precipitable water so basically um, abnormally moist um, air. And as it's running into the UK and Ireland, you can see it's over the UK and Ireland for quite a long time. And especially with the bulk of Storm Amy during Friday, we have very high anomalies. And as that runs into the higher ground of the western coasts and just land in general, the air is forced to rise, it cools and condenses and forms rain clouds. So we're also going to be seeing a lot of rain, as you can see on the Arpeg model here. A lot of rain. Rain's already falling across parts of uh, Ireland and Scotland Sorry, I've just skipped to the end today. But as you can see, during Friday afternoon and into the evening, we get a lot of rainfall across northern Scotland. And then during Saturday, we get sh heavy showers on the backside. And we also get a strong cold front, which is likely to pass through England uh, as well. So this is the situation for Storm Amy. It's going to be a deep, powerful low, likely to be pretty disruptive. And as we discussed, the more likely solution is we get a spell of very strong winds during... Uh, Friday evening into Saturday morning across northwest Scotland. Uh, the exact details of the location are to be uh, kind of decided upon and I'll do another video about that later but we know now the general uh, location of the strong winds and also as I was talking about it's going to be a generally unsettled day for the whole of the UK and Ireland uh, with heavy wind and heavy rain. But anyway that's about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to do more videos so stay up to date. Bye.